Hey guys, Chris, also known as Mosquito here. Glad you could join me in my shop today. I will be looking at cutting tongue and groove joints with the Stanley number 45. So, let's get started. So I'm just gonna disassemble some parts here so I can go over the setup and talk about that. So I have all the, the main parts. I've got the main body, the short rods on, because for tongue and groove, since it's pretty much always on the edge grain. I mean, it's not really tongue and groove if it's not. I'm using the short rods because I won't have to get the extra reach from the long rods, which I have here, but shouldn't be needed. And then I will be using the main fence that is required for cutting the tongue. And then, of course, I've got the fence. So here's the tongue and groove iron that I'll be using. This is the quarter inch tongue and groove iron. They also made one in 3 16 inch size. Uh, it's a pretty small difference, but just make sure that you use the correct plowing iron when you make the groove of your tongue and groove. Otherwise, you'll have a pretty loose fit and that would be kind of obnoxious. So, one thing to note on the cutter here is that when you're looking at it, you have this little thing in the middle that has a screw and that's what you use to adjust the depth. You just take your screwdriver, loosen that screw, and then you can slide this little depth stop up and down here. But I usually just leave it as low as I can because I never really had a reason not to. And one thing to note here with this iron is that the depth stop in the middle there, it's actually from the bevel down to this depth stop, is what you are going to be using for getting the actual depth. Um, as you can see it's beveled uh, because the distance is not from this cutting edge down to the top of this bevel on the depth stop because it doesn't cut straight up and down like this. It actually cuts at a 45 degree angle and so that's why it's it's angled here at a 45 degree angle so if you're going to be measuring the depth based on setting that depth stop you have to measure from the edge of the iron straight down to where it would intersect that plane uh, from from the top face of that so just keep that in mind if you do plan on putting it somewhere other than just all the way down like this uh, just because that's how you're going to have to measure instead of trying to go bevel to bevel. And the way I usually do it is I typically cut the tongue first just because I've found it's a little bit easier to set the plane back up for the groove than it is to try and set the tongue off of the groove. Either way works, but I just found it a little bit easier to cut the tongue first. So I'm going to go ahead and get that set up, and then we will go from there. Alright, so I've removed all the parts except for the main casting. And what I will do is go ahead and take your tongue iron and put it in the plane. And one of the things to watch out for is that if you have this depth stop, assuming you have one, unless you have an older style, if you have this all the way up like that, you might run into issues with the tongue and groove iron in that there's a little step here that kind of comes out down by the edge, end of the iron. And if that's too long, I have the issue with my other tongue and groove iron, and you have the depth adjustment set too far back, then it'll actually run into the plane up here, and then you won't be able to get the iron in place and it's kind of frustrating if you're not exactly sure what you're looking for. So if that's an issue you run into, just make sure you set the depth stop down a little bit and then it clears just fine. And then I just kind of tighten this down a little bit so I can still adjust. So I can still adjust the depth of the iron, but so I don't have to worry about the iron falling out when I'm doing that. So what I usually like to do sometimes is I'll just back it off until both the front and the back of the skates are resting on my workbench and then I'll start increasing the depth until it just hits the bench so you can kind of hear if I slide it backwards you can now hear the iron catching and so I just sight down the skate and then make sure that that's all pushed over and then tighten that down 
And then I take my other skate there, and you can just push it in, slide it all the way over, because then I just push it over until I hit the depth stop here, just with the skate, because then it just doesn't really, doesn't really get in the way. And then hopefully that will still be on your board, because if it's not, then you're gonna have a pretty, pretty thin side, pretty thin side for your groove there. So you'll just want to make sure that you have it centered when you set up the fence, and then it won't matter. Because you want this this skate here, you want to ride on the workpiece because that gives you added stability, it makes it quite a bit easier to cut the tongue and groove. So then. I have a micro adjustment on my fence. I like to use it because it's there and it's easy. It does work just fine without it, so don't worry if you don't have it. You just have to wiggle the fence a little bit more than trying to use the, the micro adjustment. As you can see, with the two sets of holes, I'm using the top set of holes. And that's because the tongue cutting iron, you can kind of see, overhangs the edge of the main body skate, or the sliding skate here. And so you probably are gonna have to get the fence to go underneath that cutter in order to get the tongue centered in the board or roughly centered. So that's why you use those top holes because then you can tighten this down and then you can have that actually go underneath the groove or the tongue iron. So that way you can get that groove centered later and have the tongue centered in both the edge pieces. And then, as you can also see here, I have the spurs are both not being used. Again, that's because we're doing long grain, and so we don't want to have those catch in the grain and try and skate you off track. So, that covers the setup. So now we will go and cut our tongue. So you may notice I've actually changed planes here. It's a little bit grungier, I guess, than the other one. But it still works just fine. It doesn't have the micro adjust, so like I said, works just as well. I've got everything set up pretty much the same. Uh, I just already had this one set up because I've been using it to cut tongue and groove for the back of my tool chest. But I have the board here in my vise. It's in my leg vise on my workbench. And so I can get access to the edge grain. I have it up enough so that way once I get down to depth, I don't have to worry about the the fence hitting my bench or anything like that. So, similar to plowing a groove, you'll want to start at the end here, and then just sort of work your way back. Just kind of keep going as you go along. Again, I use pretty much the same grip that I do. You know, I put my, my thumb up here, I put the knob of the fence, since this is the style of 45 that I have. Some of them have the, the knob up here, in which case I just grab the rods, but I put my hand on there like this, and then I have my fingers underneath so I can push on the fence, push against the workpiece so that you don't get your tongue to go off center. And then you just start at the end and keep going. And I've actually already set this plane up, like I mentioned already. Uh, so the tongue on this is already centered on my board but you'll want to make sure that you go ahead and center that up just by adjusting the fence uh, before you actually start cutting the tongue on your board so make sure you do that I already have and then you can get to cutting the tongue As you can see, or here, the depth stop is now engaged, so it's no longer cutting. Had a little bit of a reverse grain going on here, and that was kind of fun. Sometimes you might have to back the iron off just a little bit to kind of combat grain direction. Sometimes you can't quite go with as heavy a cut as this if you're going against the grain, which does happen from time to time. You kind of need to make sure that you match the fence to the face of the board when you're cutting both the tongue and the groove, so you don't always have the option to flip the board and make the grain direction go whichever way you want. So just keep that in mind. If you have to go against the grain, just take a shallower cut and it won't be an issue. 
And then something I like to do once I'm done, sometimes I do it before if the pieces actually matter, but I'll just take a pencil and then I'll mark the face that I use the fence on. That way when I go later to fit it up with the groove board, I know which, which side the fence is referenced off of, so that way I keep that consistent all the way across and don't run into any misalignment issues. Alright, so now I've taken the tongue iron out. I'll switch that over for the groove iron. I'm not going to go over this too much depth, just because we've already kind of covered the plowing of a groove, but there are a couple of little tricks that I use to get this set up when I'm doing tongue and groove to get the groove to line up with the tongue correctly and then to get the depth correct. The depth doesn't, well I don't want to say it doesn't matter, but it's not quite as critical that you get the depth perfect because a lot of times when you're using tongue and groove you're going to be using it to allow for expansion and contraction of the boards uh, such as the back of my tool chest is what I'm using these for currently and so the depth isn't quite critical but you don't really need to go too far because that just kind of weakens the strength of the board when you have a deeper groove it gives you more leverage to snap the sides off but I have my quarter inch iron is now in the plane, you can see it in there. I'm going to leave off the other skate because it is only a quarter of an inch, although it does technically clear, it's pretty much the same width as the iron, so I usually leave it off just because I don't have to deal with any binding because I've had issues with that in the past. So then we'll just take our fence and you can use those bottom holes again. And then since I have the micro adjust, I'm going to set the fence out further than I know it needs to be, and then I'll just use the micro adjustment, but you'll have to actually set that up with the regular fence if you don't have the micro adjustment. So we'll just swing around here, and then I will show you how I set up the grooving plane. Okay, with my tongue board still set up here in my vise, I'm just going to go ahead and line the iron up on the tongue here. And so you just want to get that lined up, just get it set there. And then if you have a micro adjustment fence, go ahead and loosen the screw for that. And then just get the fence set up so that the groove iron stays right in line with the tongue. And just tighten back down. Or you might just have to loosen up the two screws and then kind of wiggle the fence in. I find that kind of rocking it just a little bit makes it a little bit easier to adjust. But once you get that set up, then what I do is I take the groove and the skate and I set it on the shoulder here of the tongue. And then you loosen up the depth stop. And then I just lower that until it just hits the tongue. Because then you know that you'll end up with about the same depth for the groove as the tongue. So once you've got that set up, I just like to double check that nothing moved. Then you can go on to your other workpiece. Make sure that you have the face marked out, which I always do. I, I know that this is going to be the front of my groove board, and so I just have marked out with some pencil lines there. So I know which way it registers once I have to get these two lined up. All right, so with our plane all set up, it's time to cut the groove. Just like the last time, make sure you keep pressure against the face of the workpiece, holding the plane so that you can do that with your left hand, only push forward with your right, and then just plow the groove starting from the end and working your way back. And now with your groove piece done, I've gone ahead and put the tongue piece back in the workbench and this is where these lines come in helpful and you just line them up make sure they fit and then one of the things is that you're going to kind of see this you know the line I mean there's not a whole lot you can do about it one of the tricks that I like to do you can either run a bead a lot of people you'll see you'll put a bead on the tongue board just kind of makes it decorative and then hides the little gap but Another option that I like using, just because it's a little bit faster, a little bit easier, requires fewer setup steps, I just take a small block plane, and I just kind of cut a little chamfer on this edge, 
because then it kind of breaks this edge and it also, I mean, it's still a decorative thing, just not quite as decorative as a bead. So I do that on the front edge of my tongue board. And then I also do that on my groove board. So with that little V groove, it just kind of adds a little bit of shadow, you know, and dresses it up a little bit. It makes it so it doesn't look like it's that out of place. Like, oh, hey, there's a seam. It's just a little bit more decorative, but still subtle. It's kind of my preference, I guess. I've done beading before on tongue and groove, where I just put a bead in this board and it does the same thing. It's just a little bit fancier. I just kind of like this method. I've especially been using it on my tool chest because it's a tool chest and I just kind of want to get them done and that's quite a bit faster. So even with some expansion contraction, you might get a little bit of a gap in there, but that's kind of the reason for doing something to that edge. So you still have a little bit of a shadow in there, but you might not even notice if it is moving just because it's always going to have a little bit of a light diffusion or a little bit of a shadow in there. So there we have it. That's cutting tongue and groove with a Stanley number 45. Thanks for watching.